Good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my home in Livingston, Montana. Okay, before I get started here, let me have a little drink of coffee to wet the whistle. And back in my younger days, it was a little booze to wet the whistle, but I'm getting too old for that kind of stuff. Okay, today's subject is buying property up here in Montana, the state of Montana. Now listen, I don't have any notes. I've got nothing prepared. You know, I just love it when some of these YouTubers, and I'm not naming anybody because a lot of them do it, but they're, they get this saying here on YouTube, they'll go, now we're going to take a deep dive into this subject. Get that, a deep dive. I'm going to tell you what a lot of this nonsense is. It's a great big dive into their own BS. That's what this is. I just thought I'd throw that in there because this video here has no organization whatsoever. I'm just going to speak what's on my mind and let it go with that. Like I say, the subject is buying property or houses up here in Montana. And the reason why I'm addressing this is because I get asked my fair share of questions about, you know, the geography, the weather, the economy, uh, the land itself, uh, yeah, you can just imagine, you know, on and on and on. Uh, the simple fact of the matter is, is I really couldn't cover this whole subject because Montana is a very big state. It's the fourth biggest state in the Union. As a matter of fact, 93 million acres. That's what the state of Montana is, 93 million acres. But all I'm sitting here to do, my purpose for this video is to give a little advice, a little encouragement, a little knowledge or whatever have you to somebody that might be looking to move to Montana. Now, I've done several of these type of videos, you know, and I can't guarantee you that this one's going to be any better than any other ones I've done, probably not. But here it is. Here is something that everybody really needs to know if they're considering moving to Montana, buying some acreage, especially that, building a home, and whatever. You need to pay strict attention to where you're buying at. I mean, precisely. You need to know exactly what the wind is doing. You need to know exactly what the snowstorms do. You need to know if you can access your property due to high snow levels and on and on like that. You know, right off the get-go, you know, because you take like Livingston here, right over my right shoulder here, and I made a real scratchy, noisy video on this very subject. We got a place called Wine Glass Mountain, and it's just really not, you know, as the crow flies, we're only talking eight, ten miles to the top of Wine Glass from Livingston, but the winds, the, predominantly most of the winds that we get in Livingston come out of the southwest, and they come roaring right over that Wine Glass Mountain, and they and right into the people that live out there. And I don't, I can't even tell you how many people I ran into that bark and whine and cry and stuff because they went to all the trouble of securing land out there because it's pretty cheap and I advise people all the time not to buy out there and not to build out there but a lot of people do do because the land is relatively cheap. That land is rocky. It doesn't support good growth of most anything. It, it, a decent weed doesn't even want to grow out there. <laughs> you know, yeah, Wine Glass Mountain, you know, so if you guys, anybody's thinking about moving into Paradise Valley here, forget all about Wine Glass Mountain. But that's what you need to find out, is that kind of stuff. And also, if you're into gardening and whatnot, have you, you need to figure out what rock you can hide behind. Because in this country where I'm at, the wind blows a lot, and if you're 
If your property sits in an area where you got a lot of wind, you're going to have a lot of problems with a garden, okay? You know, like that. And then, you know, I think I said this access, and when I mean access, I'm talking about access to main roads like that are in town. You know, like that'll get you into town or out there on I-90 and stuff like that. Because some of these some of these county roads around here, they don't plow them very well. And people will come out here in the summertime and find a place and go, oh man, you know, Martha, we just got to buy this and blah, blah, blah. And they start doing the, the what I call a pilgrim dance. And so they spend a whole, you know, half a million dollars and buy a real fancy layout like that. And then come to find out it's dang near impossible to get to town and back because the roads aren't plowed. So you end up having to hire somebody or, you know, buy your own plow, put it on your own truck and do your own plowing, you know. So there's this kind of stuff that, you know, you know, and, and another thing too, when it comes to houses, and stuff like that. I personally advise people to stay away. I'm talking about buildings, houses. A lot of people think it's cute to buy those, you know, real old colonials, uh, Victorians, and go, oh well, there, Martha, you know, uh, we'll 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 put in a little money and we'll fix her on up. <laughs> Look at here. These contractors up here in Montana don't work for nothing. And if you're not a builder yourself and you don't know how to, do, you know, you don't know how to do any of this kind of stuff, you're going to be into an overhaul for a lot of money. It's just that doggone simple. I would personally myself, unless you are bored and don't have anything else to do with your time, I would stay away from these older homes. You know, the, you know, I probably wouldn't buy anything to give you a time figure. I wouldn't buy anything probably any older than, say, that building, you know, maybe around the 50s. Or, you know, and, and that, that'd be about it for me. This place that I lived in, I've, I've been in here since, I bought this in 2004. This place was built in 1974. It's The structure's still pretty good. You know, I, I did have to pour some money into this place, new paint job, a new porch, if you will, or a mini deck, new shingles. But you know how that goes, you know, that's just par for the course. Because the, the weather in Montana can be, can be, the word we use here is brutal. Did you hear me? Brutal. And, and it, 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 it can really play on buildings and stuff. It, it, the wind around here in Livingston, it, 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 it's real famous for ripping siding right off of houses. I, I've watched whole shingle layouts on roofs just peel right off and blow the buildings. You know, I shouldn't be laughing, but this kind of stuff happens, you know. So you, you really, and that's another thing too. Trees. How many trees do you have around your place? Because in this country, with the violent storms that we get and everything, it's not good to have a bunch of trees around your house. You want to know why? Because if the weather's just right, you're going to be wearing that house on, I mean, you're going to be wearing that tree on your house. It's as simple as that. Right here in Livingston, I don't know how many times I've been driving by after these great big wet, sloppy snowstorms and seen whole trees just caved right into houses. And <laughs> so I, I really shouldn't laugh, but I I, I got kind of lucky because I bought a place that's up. I sit up on a hill that overlooks Livingston, and I don't have. I got one sorry little. Uh, a weeping willow tree that's on my property and one year I was using some killer, some weed killer and I almost killed that poor tree but I've been nursing it along and trimming it and then I think it's going to make it, you know, but I, when, I, when I first moved in here I had 23 Russian olive trees, branches, bushes, I didn't mean to say branches, but bushes growing along my north fence line well, that was my fence line. 
I got my steel chainsaw out there and cut down every one of them because the, the Russian olives are really thorny. It's a really nasty bush, i.e. tree. And it, them, 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 them Russian olives were just tearing my lawnmower up, and my riding lawnmower. Because I have a big enough yard where I don't get out there and push no, no lawnmower. I'm way too old and way too lazy for that kind of stuff. It takes me, oh, with my riding lawnmower, it takes me an hour and a half to mow my lawn. And if my grass has any length to it at all, if you're using a push hand lawnmower, five hours. Five hours, I said. And, you know, so you want to look at stuff like that. If you, if you want to enjoy the outdoors and go fishing, the Yellowstone River is only like a mile and a half from my house. Well, you don't want to spend all day up here screwing around in your yard and weeds and all this. So you want to look at that factor, you know. And, then it, and here's another thing. If you're, if you're building out of town, you need to look at the factor. Where is your water at? Because you're going to have to drop a well. You know, you might have to have a somebody come out and, you know, do some well witching for you or, or whatever have you, you know, because the simple fact of the matter is the way it works with well drilling, and I know this all too well because I used to work for the Bureau of Mines and Geology, Montana State Bureau of Mines and Geology, and we run a well drilling outfit for our sampling and everything. So I've got a general idea about how far you got to go down to hit a decent aquifer for water supply. The farther that you have to drill, the more that that that, that old driller is just going just like this because they charge by the foot, and it's not cheap, you know. So if, if you're if you if, if he has to drop a well to say two three hundred feet, that to me that's a little bit too far, you know. In my humble opinion, you want to be able to get into water less than 100 feet. Did you hear me? Less than 100 feet. Because, it, you know, these wells are well, they're expensive, you know. And then, of course, you want to take into consideration your road, the roadway that's into your place. That might not be too awful good and, and stuff like that. And, of course... Your neighbors are going to come into play because some of these people are, well, excuse me there, YouTube, you can ban my channel, but some people around here are jackasses, especially up Paradise Valley, I know. And so, you know, it, 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 you, you would be surprised at the amount of people that take a look at Montana and they think that Montana, oh, it's, it, it's so beautiful here, which it is, and, 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 and and they kind of compare the whole state like it like it's like say it it's around here in Paradise Valley. It's not like that. Eastern Montana, east central Montana, eastern Montana is way different than say northwestern Montana. We got all the mountains starting about right here in southwestern Montana where I'm at, and going west and going north. You know, one third of the state of Montana is covered by mountains, and the uh, and the other two thirds is plains country, uh, ranging country, ranging ground, that kind of stuff. You know, so you got you got to be really careful what you're buying into, and you need to ask a lot of questions. and And I'm not going to sit here and put down you know, realtors and stuff like that, because I know a few pretty good realtors, and you know, but there's a lot of people that are real freaked out about realtors, and they, I know, I've proven it on my channel here, there's people that write to me, they, a lot of people, as a matter of fact, in the past, they'd rather talk to somebody like me, you know, even though I'm as far away from a, man, I'm, I'm as far away from a real estate agent as I am a, uh, a, a chief in the Congo, so to speak, you know what I mean? But, but a lot of people would rather get the opinion of a native rather than somebody that's trying to sell property, you know, or, you know, I'm, you know. So, but not all real estate agents are crooked because by law, they're supposed to disclose everything that's screwed up with the property. But I know from experience that that doesn't happen, you know. And so, uh, 
what I'm trying to do here is make it so that people, when you do, if you do make a decision to move to Montana, if you do make a decision to buy a home here, if you do make the decision to build a home here, that you're happy and that you made the right choice. Because I am just sitting here to tell you that a, a few square miles can mean all the difference in the world on whether you're going to have a happy home experience or not, if that makes any sense at all. I, I kid around with people all the time. They'll say, How's a, how is a Jim living around here? And I always tell them it depends on what rock you're hiding behind. You know, because... When these winds get to howling, that's that's the only bad thing about living in around here in Livingston, Montana, is the winds. But there's a trade-off. We the, the 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 fastest wind that the wife and I have ever experienced here is a microburst that only lasted for about five minutes. It was 105 miles an hour. Okay, but but we routinely get winds 40, 50, 60 miles an hour. Or, you know, like that. But here's the trade-off. Livingston, Montana happens to be one of the warmest spots in the state of Montana. I'm going to repeat that. Livingston, Montana happens to be one of the warmest places in the state of Montana. And there are some places that are very, very cold. You go high up in elevation, usually access is not too good. But the higher up in elevation you go, the colder it gets. Now you take like up there in that glacier country, it gets real cold up there. Uh, West Yellowstone, Montana gets real cold. I lived there for nine years. And so, you know, and that's only 125 miles from here. So what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to make anybody aware of is is a few miles one way or the other, east, west, north, what, whatever have you, can make all the difference in the world whether you have a nice place to live or a place that's hell, so to speak, <laughs> you know. And so, and I don't know what else I can say here. Uh, you know, but one thing I will tell you this before I close this file off, because I can tell I'm, I'm running out of stuff and not, not making any sense. But any time you get a real nice piece of property that maybe has nice crick running through it, lots of big game animals, you know, and the ground is pretty fertile and not too rocky. And that's another thing you got to put up in the state of Montana is this ground around here is very, very rocky. Keep that in mind. But, you know, let's just, the nicer the plot of land is, naturally that real estate price is going to go just like that. It's just that simple, man. Used to be, I can remember when I was a kid, you could get, and this was up in that Flathead Lake country, you could get an acre of ground for $300 an acre. Try that now. That's that's impossible. I'll just put it to you that way, you know. Personally, myself, I think that the real estate and land prices and everything are outrageous here in Montana, but I have, I've had a lot of snow, a lot of, uh, out of staters and different people that have made friends with me tell me that it's just as bad in, in some of the other states back east or in California or wherever have you. So, but you know, so probably another thing that may help out people is if you talk, instead of just jumping into a deal that you think is good and not really know. Probably the best thing to do is ask a lot of questions of locals, in, in, no matter which area you're thinking about moving to, because I sure can't tell you where to move. The reason being is because this state is so doggone big. <laughs> you know, I mean, way big. You know, it takes eight hours to drive from Yellowstone National Park, the, 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 you know, over by Gardner, Montana, was straight south of here. That, that's right on the Wyoming border. It takes eight hours to drive up to the Canadian, the Canadian border, and then from east to west. The other direction I just said was north to south, but from east to west, it takes two and a half days. I mean, Montana is a big state, so you know that's why I can't. I can't cover it all, but I can just tell you, 
be wary, you know what I mean? And always keep in mind about Mother Nature. How harsh is she going to be if you move to the state of Montana? That's what I've got to say. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and that's all I've got to say. And uh, like I'm famous or infamous for saying, take care of yourself, and we shall see you on down the trail, my friends. And where's the button I need to push to get out of here because I always goof that up. Anyway, adios.